everybody, so in today's video I am going to be talking about something that I haven't spoke about on my channel in quite a while and I got to the point where I thought I want to talk about this in a video. This topic is quite difficult to talk about because it covers such a wide variety of different things. I'm going to be talking about mental health and I don't want to say anything wrong in this video because I know that that literally covers a massive variety of different conditions and disorders and things like that. So it's going to be more related to like my experience based on mental health and what I've experienced in the past and now and I just want to make this video to hopefully make people just watching it kind of think a little bit more about different sort of health conditions and about you know other people in their lives and just kind of make people a little bit more aware because I know that we are obviously aware that there are people out there that suffer from mental health problems but sometimes you just don't think about it with say people that you don't know or you just need to think about it a little bit more so I wanted to make this video because I'm actually quite passionate about this if you didn't already know which you might do because I've done several videos on my channel but I suffered from selective mutism when I was a child I don't really know when I stopped suffering from that I can't really give an exact age because it's something that it's it's almost like a timeline like it's not something that just stops one day it's something that kind of slowly fizzles out and even now I still struggle a little bit even now um, with certain things but I wouldn't say at all that I have selective mutism anymore I think it's just something that kind of leads on from that certain anxiety things but that's basically what I had when I was younger and Therefore, I feel like I have a big understanding of how some people can feel and how mental health can really affect you. Obviously, that's just one condition out of thousands. So obviously, I can't, you know, talk that much about everybody. I don't know. I just think man mental health problems are so common in so many different people that you really do need to kind of think about it a little bit more and understand it. In this video I will be mainly linking it to anxiety and mainly talking about kind of anxiety based um, conditions so if you don't want to watch this video because you don't want to listen to that or whatever then just click off um, but that's what I'm going to be mainly talking about so I might kind of title the video anxiety or mental health anything like that I'm not sure um, but that's what this video is going to be mainly talking about because that's kind of what um, I've experienced. The aim of this video is to kind of get people a little bit more aware of what people are going through that literally just sit next to them. You could have your best friend that you think you know very well when actually you don't know them at all. They could be struggling with things at home that you don't know. They could be going through anything you have no idea because most people that suffer from these problems don't actually want to talk about it they don't want to think it's happening and they just want to keep it hidden to themselves because they feel like that's um their way of coping with it which i completely understand i think in my life i if i could help somebody with a health a mental health problem it would be a child i feel sorry for children that are shy Whenever I see a child that looks shy, I have that feeling inside of me that takes me straight back to when I was younger, when I was a child, and it reminds me of myself. And I don't want anyone to feel the way that I used to feel when I was at school as a child. And it just makes me sad to think that there are people that are obviously the same as me, because obviously there was. And there's so many different things that children can experience to do with mental health when they're young. If I was forced to go into a career within kind of the NHS or anything like that, I would go into looking after people who suffer from anxiety and, you know, specifically people with selective mutism because I think that's something that I'm quite passionate about. I think some people are obviously very passionate about um, anxiety sufferers and want to help that haven't experienced anxiety themselves and I think if you haven't experienced it yourself then you won't truly understand what it's like in those specific situations. I don't want children to have bad memories of their childhood when they grow up and I wouldn't say I have bad memories but like I look back on my childhood and I have good memories. Like, I do have a lot of good memories and often I laugh about things that happened in my childhood that are quite funny but at the same time in the back of my mind I know that that even in those good times I still had the fear and I still had the anxiety of 
constant worry and constant kind of uptight fear of people and speaking and everything like that. Children obviously are more of a worry because if they have or if they're suffering from anxiety that can prevent them from learning and it can prevent them from progressing in life because obviously they're not going to involve themselves as much in school activities. I never wanted to involve myself in any activities. Forcing a child to involve themselves in an activity is not helping them and I could not stress that enough. As a child, teachers would try and push you forward into doing things, into saying things, into involving yourself in terms of forcing you to get up in front of the class and do a presentation or forcing me to stand up and talk about something on the spot. Um, they would do that because they would think, oh, that's helping me. No, it is not. It, trust me, it does not help in any way, shape or form. It makes the experience horrendous. And when I come out of it, I feel 10 times worse than when I went in. I'm not proud of myself at all. Like some things you do in life are very difficult, but you come out being proud of yourself. Those situations are not them. You come out thinking, I do not want to experience that ever again. So I think that's where kind of teachers need to understand a little bit more and I want this video to kind of hopefully make people think a bit more and I just wish that when I was younger some teachers would have understood a little bit more how to deal with people because that is not the way. Obviously like I just said teachers lack understanding and that's something that I am quite passionate about and I'm not saying that teachers are horrible people or that they don't care or anything like that because you can see that they are trying and looking back I know that they are trying but it honestly doesn't help and I think a lot of the time teachers just don't because they haven't potentially haven't experienced um, the condition themselves or they haven't experienced anxiety then they won't understand obviously everybody experiences a little bit of nerves sometimes but anxiety is a different level to being nervous it is completely different feeling because I've experienced both trust me they are completely different feeling anxious is basically something that's inside your stomach that is constantly there and you feel unable to do things and you you feel so much panic you almost feel like you can't do something um, which is basically where selective mutism comes in where you can't talk but being nervous is kind of a different feeling in your stomach and it just you know you can still do something but it's a bit more of a struggle um, but it is on a different level trust me so yeah teachers don't understand as much as what they should do and therefore children can't get help the way that they should because when a child is young it will not it will view itself as different they won't have experienced anything else as wow that lorry was big so they won't know anything different and they will think that they're just almost you know they won't understand why they are different to other people and they won't you know they won't be aware that they've got this mental health condition i didn't know that i had that until i was basically you know recovered um but looking back definitely did also other children you know in the playground in lessons things like that lack understanding as well obviously because they're young they don't understand and this is when obviously bullying can take place children will bully other shy children because they're easy to pick on and because they think of them as being weird obviously that will not help in any way shape or form i wouldn't say that i was bullied you know at all but i would say that you know a lot of people would say things to me or make comments to me or disclude me from things because they said i was weird or whatever or they just didn't want to involve me and obviously because i was very shy and because i have my selective mutism i just sort of stayed on my own most of the time in year one and two i would stay in the playground on my own i would just sit at lunch and break on my own just chilling like i didn't really you know I couldn't involve myself with other people I did eventually find some friends thank god um but it's very difficult to find friends when you suffer from a condition like that children are obviously more vulnerable like I just said basically they're more vulnerable to attack from certain comments and things like that they'll take more things to heart they'll believe what people tell them um like bullying comments and things like that and they don't feel in control of their own life they feel like they're being told what to do all the time and you know th there's no independence in any way and it just doesn't help you know anxiety sufferers at all children don't know how to help themselves they can't help themselves because they don't understand what's happening they don't understand what's wrong and it's 
teachers and its parents that need to be able to recognize that there's something wrong and try and kind of understand it and work it out and it's not about thinking okay how are we going to deal with this what are we going to do where are we going to send them you have to kind of get on the same page as the child and you need to let them know that they are in control of their own life and that whatever they want will happen because it's not about forcing anyone to do anything because trust me that does not work. I also wanted to touch on the fact that shyness is not really a thing. A lot of people say, oh, um, they're a really shy person or that person is just generally quite shy. Well, I, you know, that term is obviously used quite a lot and even I use that term a lot, but really, shyness isn't just sort of a personality trait. I feel like that is actually in itself some kind of mental health problem even you know there's obviously a spectrum and some people are down here and some people are up here and you know different anxiety conditions are all the way along and if someone's shy and they don't feel like they want to talk in social situations or they're just very quiet that's not because they want to it's because they feel like they can't or they feel like you know they don't want to involve themselves because they don't want to sound stupid or because they think they're not worthy as much as other people or they're self-conscious and all of those things are things that it is in you know in your mind it's something that is you know anxiety basically so if somebody's shy don't think oh yeah they're just a shy person try and help them you know try and talk to them try and you know involve them in your conversations a little bit more don't just leave them out and think oh you know that they're, they're shy try and just be a little bit more of a friend to them and be wary of that because you just might think oh yeah my friend blah 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 is just a shy person well you know there's a reason why they're shy and you have to try and get you know their confidence up and out of themselves by the you know you have to let them but don't you know don't push them down or don't take control of situations you've got to let other people have their say in things like that because otherwise they will just feel left out and what I'm saying by this is that someone can't always be shy you can't have someone that's always shy because surely that is sort of an anxiety issue obviously like I can't say specifically what that is but if somebody's always shy, it means that they've clearly got something that's stopping them from involving themselves or stopping them from um, doing things or something that makes them feel that way. Whereas if you're shy, just kind of occasionally, obviously you can be shy occasionally. Certain situations come up where you think, oh, I'm a bit shy, you know, to do that or to say that, or I'm a bit shy with this person. Um, because maybe you're at a job interview, you might get a little bit shy because they're, you know, they're very intimidating. But that is completely different to somebody that is shy in every situation or just consistently shy. I also had a comment on one of my previous selective mutism videos saying, oh, selective mutism isn't a thing, you're just shy, I'm shy, just like loads of other people are, don't try and make this out to be a thing when it's not, you're only making it worse. By you saying that or by that person saying that in itself is making it worse. I replied back to that comment and my friend Leanne actually replied back to that comment because that made us quite angry. It just demonstrates the lack of understanding that some people have, which is why I'm doing this video. You, she clearly had no clue what it feels like to have anxiety. She clearly had no idea and she will just sit there and watch my video and just think, you're just exaggerating, you're just making it up. I wish, I wish I was, because honestly, it feels horrible to feel trapped in yourself, not being able to say anything. So that comment, you know, that person is not necessarily a nasty person, but they're just ignorant and they just don't understand anything to do with the condition. And it just shows a lack of awareness of, you know, what selective mutism actually is. So that kind of makes me angry because I know there's a lot of people out there that will sit there and that will even watch this video and think, oh my God, not another one. You know, it's just a trend or whatever. Anxiety is a different level to just a little bit of nerves here and there. And the sooner people realize that, the sooner people are able to, you know, start recovering. I also wanted to talk about adults because obviously children suffer from mental health problems and you can recognise that and you can see that in them because you know that they don't want to involve themselves etc but then they grow up and hopefully over time will start to be able to recover. 
when there's a mental health condition within adults or when there's anxiety within adults that shows that there's something there that they haven't been able to overcome through their life experiences a lot of things in life like moving on to uni and things like that can actually really help um, mental health sufferers to you know be able to recover sometimes it makes it worse but sometimes you know it does actually you know life experiences can help but when an adult suffers from a mental health problem it shows that they're you know that they are struggling and that they need some help and i think that that is something that isn't actually recognized as much as it is in children and it needs to be you might have a friend that you see every single day and that you have a laugh with and that they you know you think they're fine but they might go home and they might feel really insecure they might be depressed they might have severe anxieties where they don't want to leave the house or where they don't want to do certain things or they feel scared in every situation and you wouldn't know because you just know them for how they are with you which is often absolutely fine just because they seem fine with you doesn't mean that they are fine it means that they're not talking to you about the way that they feel because they think that if they talk about it nothing's going to change it's just going to make it worse probably so you need so people need to just be a little bit more wary around even adults because people just think oh you know they're an adult they're fine you know just leave them get let them get on with their life you know they're an adult they'll be fine but actually adults are just as vulnerable as children and teenagers with their mental health and you need to be a little bit more kind of wary in just every single day situations i just think it's important to just recognize when there's those situations in life where there might be a social gathering or something and somebody isn't talking in that social situation because they don't you know it's not because that they're shy and reserved and because they just want to keep themselves to themselves it's because they don't think they don't feel like they can give an input or they don't feel like they can speak because they feel self-conscious or they feel inferior to everyone else or they feel like they're being pushed out or that they will be judged for what they say and when they do say something don't just kind of push that down or you know push that to the back involve conversation with them and try and you know just every single adult or every single child that you've come across involve them make them feel like that they are part of this world as well and what i'm saying in this video is just every single person you come across be positive be happy if they look like they're a little bit kind of shy and reserved try and talk to them make them feel better and just be a little bit more aware don't think oh they're not talking so i won't talk to them kind of thing so kind of just to round this video up a little bit more this video was basically just kind of talking about the lack of understanding that people have and i do know that there is a massive thing with lack of understanding because i get so many co i get a few comments on my selective mutism videos that just are either a bit rude or just show that they don't understand the condition or they just don't know what they're on about and they're just trying to be nasty and it doesn't upset me at all it kind of makes me angry in a way because they're not just offending me they're offending thousands and thousands of other people and it just makes me think how can somebody think that way or how can somebody genuinely believe that that is a thing or that someone that suffers from anxiety is just shy a little bit shy um it, it just makes me kind of angry because i think surely there's not they've not you know been taught properly or they've not been brought up in the way to understand that and i think it's because they haven't themselves experienced the anxiety you don't have to experience anxiety to understand it and i think that's what i want this video to be about it's just that when you do suffer from anxiety and you see somebody else that also suffers from it you can really kind of feel their pain and feel what they're going through and i want you to just sit down have a think about it and just go off from this video and just be a little bit more aware of other people what they might be going through what they might be feeling try and include them try and talk to them don't think of them as weird and who knows you might come across people that you thought yourself was absolutely fine but then now when you look at them you think actually yeah they they do look like they're struggling a little bit or they do look like they don't want to involve themselves with conversation and it's not because they're an awkward person um and they don't want to talk to you it's because they don't know what to say because they're struggling um and they might be self-conscious 
I also think that people, especially kind of adults need to be educated upon anxiety conditions so that they can help children, they can help each other um, and they can just kind of be a little bit more aware and then the world can be a little bit of a better place because there's nothing worse than suffering from an anxiety and there's somebody there that just doesn't get it and doesn't understand it and you feel like you, you you know you're an absolute mess you just don't feel like you're included in the world and you don't feel like you're getting the help that you need you never know what someone's going through sat next to you over in the corner you know close friend anyone you never know what someone's even somebody you've just met you never know what they're going through so one comment can really make a difference to someone's life to the way that they think and feel and I know that because when I was younger, comments would be made. They won't even be nasty comments. They would just be comments about my appearance, about my height, about um, my makeup, about anything like that. And if somebody makes a comment on the way that I look that day, I would feel very self-conscious about that particular feature. Or I would think, oh God, is everyone thinking about that? Or is that what everyone's looking at? And then I would suddenly not want to include myself in anything and you know it's, it's little comments like that even when you don't realize you're making that comment or even though you don't mean it in a negative way it can come across and make somebody else feel like that even commenting on the way somebody eats a sandwich i know it sounds stupid but if you say oh you eat that sandwich a bit weirdly you know that's something that they're going to think oh oh no like a little bit self-conscious about it. do you know what i mean like it's just little things like that and i know it sounds stupid but trust me when you're in that situation and someone comments on different things that you do things that you say you suddenly think oh oh god should i not be doing that so just think you never know what someone else is going through be kinder look around you think okay there's a room full of people that are probably potentially struggling with life and I need to make their life better by saying things nice, by including them, and this will make you feel better, make your life better, and I just hope that you've taken something from this video. I'm sorry if I've offended anybody or anything, or if I haven't included anything. Please comment down below if you'd like to. Give the video a thumbs up and subscribe because I'm gonna be doing lots of different videos on this channel now. More chatty videos, more kind of down to earth videos like this one here. And I hope you enjoyed it. So um, I will see you in my next video.